exactly been bombarded with good news today. What's this? Oh, a little lever. The casting process for the 1981 TV series Falcon Crest was a meticulous task involving many additions and chemistry tests to ensure the right actors were chosen for each role. Jane Wyman, who played the lead role of Angela Channing, was an easy choice for the producers due to her extensive experience and reputation as a talented actress. The role of Chase Joberty, Angela's nephew, was offered to Robert Foxworth. Foxworth was chosen for his ability to portray a strong and confident character who could stand up to the formidable Angela. For the role of Julia, Chase's wife, the producers wanted an actress who could bring both strength and vulnerability to the character. After several auditions, they chose Abby Dalton, who had previously worked with Wyman on the facts of life. The character of Richard Channing, Angela's illegitimate son, was a pivotal role in the series. After a lengthy search, they cast Lorenzo Lamas, who brought the right amount of charm and cunning to the character. The chemistry between the actors was also a crucial factor in the casting process. The producers conducted chemistry tests to ensure that the actors would have a believable and engaging dynamic on screen. For example, the chemistry between Jane Wyman and Robert Foxworth was instant, and it translated well onto the screen. In addition, the producers wanted to ensure that the cast had a good rapport off-screen as well. They encouraged the actors to socialize and build relationships with each other, which helped to create a positive and collaborative atmosphere on set. Overall, the casting process for Falcon Crest was a careful and deliberate one involving many auditions, chemistry tests, and behind-the-scenes efforts to ensure that the right actors were chosen for each role. The result was a talented and cohesive cast that helped to make Falcon Crest a successful and enduring series. Made his fortune by looting the French art museums during the occupation. The director of the 1981 TV series Falcon Crest, Harold Ben Lighton, brought the story to life with his unique vision and style. He drew inspiration from film noir which is reflected in the show's dramatic lighting and suspenseful pacing. Lighton's approach was to create a world of power, ambition, and family drama set against the backdrop of a California vineyard. Collaboration was key to Lighton's process. He worked closely with the cast and crew, creating an environment that encouraged creativity and experimentation. He fostered a strong sense of community on set, which helped the actors to deliver nuanced and compelling performances. Lighten's style was characterized by his use of long takes and minimal cuts, which allowed the actors to fully inhabit their characters and the story to unfold naturally. He also employed a muted color palette, which added to the show's film noir aesthetic and helped to create a sense of tension and unease. In terms of creative influences, Lighten was inspired by the work of Orson Welles, Billy Wilder, and Alfred Hitchcock. He admired their ability to create complex and engaging narratives, and he sought to bring a similar level of depth and nuance to Falcon Crest. Lighton's approach to directing was not just about telling a story, but about creating a fully realized world that the audience could become immersed in. He was deeply committed to his vision, and he worked tirelessly to bring it to life. The result was a TV series that has endured as a classic of the genre, and that continues to captivate audiences to this day. New York. And I suppose you're very anxious to get home. Yeah, we are. Falcon Crest was a popular television series that aired from 1981 to 1990. It was a primetime soap opera that centered around the feuding families of the Tuscany Valley in California. The show was known for its dramatic plot lines, beautiful vineyard settings, and classic Hollywood stars. One of the enduring qualities of Falcon Crest is its ability to tell compelling stories that keep viewers engaged. The show's writers did an excellent job of creating complex characters and weaving intricate plot lines that kept audiences guessing. Additionally, the stunning vineyard settings and beautiful costumes added to the show's appeal. Many classic Hollywood actors appeared in Falcon Crest, but Jane Wyman, who played the lead role of Angela Channing, was a fan favorite. Her portrayal of the ruthless and cunning matriarch of the Channing family was both captivating and chilling. There are many funny, shocking, and sad facts about Falcon Crest that we will reveal throughout this video. From behind-the-scenes drama to unexpected cast changes, this show had it all. Do you have a favorite memory or personal experience related to Falcon Crest? 
We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Whether you were a fan of the show when it first aired or discovered it later on, Falcon Crest remains a beloved symbol of the television industry. Well, I'm just glad that you're alright. The production of the 1981 TV series Falcon Crest was a significant endeavor involving many aspects such as set design, locations, and logistical challenges. The set design for the series was primarily focused on the Falcon Crest Winery and the surrounding mansion, Tuscany Valley. These sets were built at the Warner Brothers Ranch in Burbank, California. The production team paid great attention to detail, ensuring that the sets were not only visually appealing, but also functional for the actors and crew. The filming locations for Falcon Crest were primarily in and around the San Francisco Bay Area, standing in for the fictional Tuscany Valley. The show's producers chose this location to take advantage of the area's natural beauty and to provide a contrast to the glamour and wealth depicted in the series. However, filming in this area also presented logistical challenges, such as coordinating transportation and accommodations for the cast and crew and obtaining necessary permits. One innovative technique employed during the production of Falcon Crest was the use of video assist technology. This technology allowed the director and other key personnel to view the shot as it was being filmed on a video monitor. This was particularly useful in scenes with large crowds or complex camera movements, as it allowed the director to ensure that all elements were in frame and that the performance was captured as intended. Another notable aspect of the production of Falcon Crest was the use of practical effects, such as pyrotechnics and miniatures. These effects were used to create the impression of explosions, fires, and other hazardous events without putting the cast and crew in danger. The production team also employed cutting-edge editing techniques, such as cross-cutting and match cuts, to create a fast-paced and engaging narrative. Overall, the production of Falcon Crest was a complex and challenging endeavor requiring careful planning, coordination, and the use of innovative techniques and technologies. Despite these challenges, the series was a critical and commercial success, and its legacy continues to be felt in the world of television today. Falcon Crest was a popular television series that aired for nine seasons and stood out from other dramas of the time like Dallas and Dynasty. The show, headed by Jane Wyman, featured a talented cast and crew who were able to make their mark in the world of classic television dramas. With its beautiful on-location photography and crisp screenplays, Falcon Crest was able to captivate its own following. The series featured a number of notable actors, including Jane Wyman as Angela Joberty Channing, a role that showcased her talents as a serious actress. The cast also included Cesar Romero, Robert Foxworth, and Lorenzo Lamas, all of whom brought their own unique talents to the show. In the 1986 season premiere, titled Aftershocks, the show featured Kim Novick as Kit Marlowe, a newcomer who wore a brunette wig and often resorted to using a gun for self-defense. Falcon Crest is known for its dramatic storylines and intriguing characters, such as Father Bob and his church, which played a central role in the earthquake-themed episode Aftershocks. The show also featured a number of other memorable moments, including the stalking of Kim Novick's character and the ongoing tensions between the various members of the Channing family. Currently airing on SoapNet, Falcon Crest is a vintage drama that is sure to be enjoyed by viewers who appreciate classic television. With its talented cast and engaging storylines, the show is a testament to the enduring appeal of well-crafted television dramas. Who knows, in the future we may see Falcon Crest return to the small screen once again, giving a new generation of viewers the opportunity to enjoy its many charms. But of course, now, Michael, I'm sure would be very happy to help all of you return east with him. The creation of the Falcon Crest musical score and soundtrack was a collaborative effort between composers Bill Conti and Jerry Jerston. Conti, known for his work on Rocky, brought energy and excitement to the score, while Jerson's background in jazz added depth and complexity. The music was designed to complement the narrative and emotional tone of the series. For instance, during intense scenes, the music would heighten the tension, while in romantic scenes, it would evoke a sense of warmth and closeness. 
The composers skillfully use leitmotifs, recurring musical themes associated with specific characters or ideas, to create continuity throughout the series. Conti and Gerson drew inspiration from various sources, including classical music and contemporary pop. They also incorporated elements of country and western music, reflecting the show's California wine country setting. The result was a unique and engaging soundtrack that significantly contributed to the show's appeal. The musicians involved in the recording sessions also played a crucial role. The Falcon Crest Orchestra, conducted by Conti, brought the composer's vision to life, creating a rich, full-bodied sound that perfectly captured the drama and emotion of the series. In interviews, both Conti and Gerson have expressed their fondness for the project, highlighting the creative freedom they were given and the satisfaction of seeing their work become an integral part of the show's success. Their work on Falcon Crest remains a testament to their musical prowess and their ability to create music that resonates with audiences, transcending the boundaries of television and leaving an enduring impact on the world of media. I have decided there was no need for a complete autopsy. But without an autopsy, how could you determine that the death was accidental? In the 1981 television series Falcon Crest, Jane Wyman shared screen time with her adopted son, Michael Reagan. Reagan played a recurring role, making his appearance alongside his mother. Cella Ward was initially considered for the part of Terry Hartford, but she declined in favor of a role in Emerald Point NAS. The original storyline for Falcon Crest had planned a romantic twist involving Chase, who was presumed drowned. The script had him returning in disguise to pursue a relationship with Nicole Sagan. However, these plans were ultimately scrapped. What'd you say? One of the most iconic scenes in the 1981 TV series Falcon Crest is the opening sequence, which features a soaring falcon against the backdrop of the Vineyard Estate. The director, Reza Badi, used sweeping aerial shots to establish the grandeur of the setting and the power dynamics at play. The Falcon, a symbol of the show's central matriarch Angela Channing, conveys a sense of freedom, ambition, and ruthlessness. Another memorable scene is the first meeting between Angela Channing, played by Jane Wyman, and Chase Joberty, portrayed by Robert Foxworth. The tension between the two characters is palpable as Angela tries to assert her dominance over Chase who has just inherited a share of the Falcon Crest winery. The actress' performances are nuanced and intense, with Wyman delivering a masterful blend of charm and menace. The direction and cinematography in this scene are also noteworthy. The use of low-angle shots and dramatic lighting emphasizes the power struggle between Angela and Chase, while the close-ups reveal the subtle emotions flickering across their faces. The scene is a masterclass in visual storytelling, using every tool at its disposal to convey the complex dynamics of the characters and the world they inhabit. The impact of these scenes on the audience is undeniable. They establish the tone and themes of the show, setting the stage for a sprawling family saga filled with intrigue, passion, and betrayal. The iconic opening sequence, in particular, has become synonymous with the show's identity, encapsulating its blend of grandeur, ambition, and ruthlessness. According to Body, the opening sequence was designed to be a visual representation of the show's theme and characters. He wanted to convey the sense of power, ambition, and conflict that would drive the series, while also showcasing the beauty and majesty of the show's setting. Wyman, meanwhile, has spoken about the challenges of playing Angela Channing, a character who is both ruthless and vulnerable. Angela is a complex woman with many layers and contradiction, she said in an interview. She's a matriarch, a businesswoman, a mother, and a lover. She's capable of great kindness and great cruelty, and she's always playing a game of power and manipulation. Overall, the iconic scenes in Falcon Crest are a testament to the show's enduring appeal and influence. They showcase the talents of the actors, directors, and cinematographers who brought the show to life, while also offering a glimpse into the complex and captivating world of the Channing family. Uh, smile. Never know, you might learn something. Long before Lorenzo Lamas joined the cast, he wasn't a Jane Wyman fan growing up, despite his family's acquaintance with her. The show's title, Falcon Crest, is derived from the birds of prey that once lived on the Joberty property. 
Interestingly, both Angela Channing and Carly Fick share the same birthday, March 5, in the series, while Jane Wyman's real-life birthday is January 5, just two months earlier. Falcon Crest, a 1981 TV series, made a significant cultural and social impact. It resonated with audiences due to its portrayal of power dynamics, family conflicts, and romance set against the backdrop of a California vineyard. The show's success led to its influence on pop culture, with its characters and storylines becoming popular references in everyday conversations. Falcon Crest contributed to discussions on relevant social themes, such as corporate greed, ambition, and family values. It explored the consequences of unchecked power and the importance of ethical decision-making. The series also showcased strong female characters, which was empowering for women and girls watching at the time. Moreover, the show's depiction of the wine-making industry and the luxurious lifestyle of the characters sparked interest in wine culture and influenced fashion trends. The series' popularity also led to the creation of various merchandise, such as wine glasses, clothing, and board games, further solidifying its impact on pop culture. In summary, Falcon Crest left a lasting cultural and social impact through its engaging storylines, memorable characters, and exploration of relevant social themes. It resonated with audiences and contributed to pop culture in various ways, making it a significant television series of its time especially when you live in surroundings like these. Of course, a lot of people don't live quite as well as you do. In the glamorous world of primetime soap operas, Falcon Crest stood out as a long-running series known for its stylish and sexy wardrobe, handpicked by Jane Wyman herself. The show, which came after Dallas and before Dynasty, struck a balance between the outrageousness of the latter and the more subdued tone of the former. Interestingly, before the show even began, several of its cast members, including Anna Alicia, David Selby, and Susan Sullivan, were already fans of Jane Wyman. The actress's enduring appeal and talent were undeniable, even to her future colleagues. Falcon Cress Angela Channing was a character who wore only the best, and her wardrobe was a reflection of her strong and very female personality. The show itself was a testament to the lasting power of the primetime soap opera, captivating audiences for years with its engaging storyline and memorable characters. Thanks for keeping me out of this. Falcon Crest, the 1981 television series, received mixed reviews from critics, but was popular among audiences. The show, which aired for nine seasons, was known for its dramatic storylines and powerful characters. Critics praised the show's cast, particularly Jane Wyman, who played the lead role of Angela Channing. The New York Times described Wyman's performance as commanding and deliciously wicked. The Los Angeles Times also had positive things to say about the show's acting, noting that the cast was first rate and that the show had a fine sense of soap opera. However, not all reviews were glowing. Some critics felt that the show was overly melodramatic and that the storylines were unbelievable. The Washington Post described Falcon Crest as a glossy, high decibel soap opera and noted that the show was not for those who demand plausibility in their primetime viewing. Despite the mixed reviews, Falcon Crest was a hit with audiences. The show consistently ranked in the top 20 in the Nielsen ratings and had a loyal following. The show's popularity was due in part to its engaging storylines and memorable characters as well as its stunning location shots of California's wine country. Falcon Crest received several award nominations over the course of its nine-season run. Jane Wyman was nominated for a Golden Globe for Best Actress in a Television Series Drama in 1982, and the show was nominated for a Primetime Emmy Award for Outstanding Drama Series in 1982 and 1983. The accolades that Falcon Crest received are significant because they demonstrate the show's impact and influence. Nominations for prestigious awards like the Golden Globes and Primetime Emmys are a testament to the quality of the show's writing, acting, and production values. These nominations also help to solidify the show's place in television history and ensure its continued popularity among fans. In conclusion, while Falcon Crest received mixed reviews from critics, it was a hit with audiences and received several award nominations. The show's success is a testament to its engaging storylines, memorable characters, and stunning location shots. 
The accolades that the show received are a mark of its impact and influence in the world of television. Is there something else? Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm not in a position. Jane Wyman, the star of Falcon Crest, was known for her involvement in the show's scriptwriting. In fact, she wrote a soliloquy for the series finale. Her co-star, Susan Sullivan, won the Jane Wyman Award at the Arthritis Foundation in 1998, honoring Wyman's own battle with the disease. Falcon Crest's success can be attributed to the dedication and talent of its cast and crew, with Wyman at the helm. Her contributions to the series left a lasting impact, making Falcon Crest a memorable part of television history. Do you have a place to stay? Uh, yeah, I thought I'd stay at the Tuscany Inn. You're not going to stay at the Tuscany The filming of Falcon Crest was not without its challenges and surprises. Jane Wyman, who played the leading role of Angela Channing, was known for her strict adherence to the script. However, there were times when co-star Lorenzo Lamas, who played her grandson, would improvise his lines, much to Wyman's displeasure. Despite this, the two actors maintained a professional relationship throughout the series. The series creator, Earl Hamner Jr., drew inspiration for Falcon Crest from his own family's vineyard in Virginia. He wanted to create a show that showcased the drama and intrigue that could arise within a wealthy family. The show's stunning vineyard setting, Tuscany Valley, was actually a combination of several locations, including the famous Golden Oak Ranch in Newhall, California. The cast and crew faced several challenges while filming at the ranch, including encounters with rattlesnakes and other wildlife. In one particular instance, a horse ridden by an actor got spooked and ran off, causing a brief delay in filming. Despite these challenges, the cast and crew formed a close-knit community during the filming of Falcon Crest. Many of the actors, including Wyman and Lamas, became good friends off-screen and would often socialize together. The show's hairstylist, Janice, was known for her warm and friendly personality, and she would often bake cookies for the cast and crew. One of the most memorable moments during the filming of Falcon Crest occurred when the cast and crew were treated to a surprise visit from President Ronald Reagan and his wife, Nancy. The Reagans were fans of the show and wanted to meet the actors and crew in person. The visit was kept a secret until the last minute, and the cast and crew were thrilled when the Reagans arrived on set. Overall, the making of Falcon Crest was a memorable experience for all involved. Despite the challenges and surprises that arose during filming, the cast and crew formed a strong bond and created a show that resonated with audiences for many years. Well, you know something, Peter? This just might be a blessing disguise. Robert Foxworth, who played Jane Wyman's nemesis on Falcon Crest, enjoyed working with her despite their character's feud. Wyman started the show at the age of 64, bringing a wealth of experience to her role. Years later, Susan Sullivan, a Falcon Crest co-star, reunited with William R. Moses on an episode of Castle, demonstrating the lasting impact of their earlier collaboration. Apparently, Jordan didn't care very much for the story either. I understand that she walked out because she's not running. Falcon Crest, a 1981 TV series, holds a significant place in film history. As one of the first primetime dramas to focus on a wealthy family and their vineyard empire, it paved the way for future shows exploring similar themes. Falcon Crest is known for its intense family drama, scheming characters, and beautiful wine country setting. The series had a considerable impact on future filmmaking, particularly in the realm of television. Its success demonstrated the potential for dramatic storytelling in a serialized format leading to the development of more complex and character-driven shows. Additionally, Falcon Crest's focus on a wealthy family's power struggles may have influenced later series such as Dynasty and Dallas. Falcon Crest also inspired subsequent works in various media. For instance, it sparked an increased interest in wine culture and vineyard settings in popular culture. Furthermore, the show's engaging storylines and memorable characters have left a lasting impression on viewers many of whom continue to appreciate the series through reruns and home video releases. In summary, Falcon Crest's legacy and influence can be seen in the ongoing popularity of dramatic television series and the enduring appeal of stories centered around wealth, power, and family dynamics. Starting to sound a little paranoid, Dad. What if... I
Robert Foxworth, dissatisfied with the production team's inability to accommodate his sabbatical request, departed from Falcon Crest at the end of its sixth season. Meanwhile, Lorenzo Lamas and Susan Sullivan paid a visit to Jane Wyman in the hospital as the show's final season was already underway. As for Wyman, she prioritized her health by retiring early to bed and arriving early on the set to film the series. What's done is done. Jane Wyman and Lorenzo Lamas were the only two actors who remained in the main cast of Falcon Crest throughout its entire nine season run. However, David Selby appeared in one more episode than Wyman, and Susan Sullivan had more appearances than K.O. Lai Kai, who was absent from 26 episodes in the final three seasons. Initially, a scene was drafted where Dina demanded Lance to break up with Melissa, but it was excluded after Robin Greer was hired for the role. The scene was ultimately not included, and Greer was still paid without appearing. Robert Foxworth, who played Chase Joberty, left the show at the end of the sixth season due to his dissatisfaction with the role. He had planned to return after a year's sabbatical, but the producers could not work out a deal, and his character was left dead. Oriental, who was interested in the remains of your father's truck, well, what makes you think that that was an Jane Wyman, the lead actress of Falcon Crest, had a strong stance when Lorimer wanted to change filming locations to save money. Wyman threatened to quit if the show moved from CBS Studio Center to the newly purchased MGM lot in Culver City, California. Marion McCargo Bell, the real-life mother of William R. Moses, played the character of Harriet Roberts, Jordan Roberts' mother. Interestingly, Bell had auditioned for the role of Maggie Joberty in 1980, but was considered too old. Two years later, she auditioned for the role of Maggie's mother, Charlotte Pershing, but was deemed too young. When it came to casting the role of Angela Channing, Jane Wyman was the first and only choice. Contrary to rumors, Barbara Stanwyck was never offered the part. Wyman's portrayal of Angela Channing became synonymous with the show, making it hard to imagine anyone else in the role. Hello. Jane Wyman was a perfect fit for the role of Angela Channing in Falcon Crest, as per Earl Hamner Jr., the show's creator. Her nice lady image added depth and sympathy to the otherwise harsh character. Interestingly, Wyman was not the second choice for the role, as some rumors suggested. Barbara Stanwyck was never offered the part, according to Hammer. In real life, Wyman was a grandmother, just like her character in Falcon Crest. The show aired in 1981, and Wyman's portrayal of Angela Channing was pivotal to its success. Her credibility and likability brought a unique dimension to the character, making her more relatable to the audience. The show and Wyman's performance left a lasting impression on viewers, making Falcon Crest a memorable series in television history. Jane Wyman, the lead actress of Falcon Crest, was known for surrounding herself with familiar faces. She brought along her old family and friends to the show set, creating a comfortable and friendly atmosphere. Whit Bissell, a veteran character actor, made his final appearance in a 1984 episode of Falcon Crest as Mr. Hobson. This marked the end of a long and prolific career that spanned over 40 years and included over 300 roles in film and television. When Falcon Crest first aired, creator Earl Hamner Jr. expressed his desire to avoid turning it into a soap opera like Dallas. However, by the second season, the show had become more serialized and abandoned the self-contained episode format of the first season, ultimately evolving into the soap opera style show that Hamner had initially sought to avoid. In the series finale of Falcon Crest, Jane Wyman, who played the lead role, penned her character's monologue herself. This touching scene paid tribute to the many characters who had been part of the show's journey. The show's first season was a resounding success, and its ratings soared even higher with the addition of David Selby and Anna Alicia in the second season. This positive trend continued for the next five seasons. The character Terry's death was initially planned to occur a few episodes into the sixth season. However, due to actress Laura Johnson's dissatisfaction with her character being written off, she decided not to return for most of the season's episodes. 
that you are unwilling to take any action. Well, I will have to remember that when election. Sarah Douglas received a job offer for Falcon Crest just hours before flying back to London. After a fruitless three-month search for work in the US, if not for the timely call from Lorimer, she would have missed the opportunity. Following the series, Jane Wyman, who played the formidable Angela Channing, retired from acting to focus on charity work and other endeavors. Wyman, who passed away in 27, stated on a Falcon Crest website that she and the cast would not reunite for a movie despite any issues. As the creator of Angela Channing, Wyman aimed to portray a strong businesswoman, avoiding the comparison to J.R. Ewing of Dallas. Initially tough, Wyman also wanted to show Angela's capacity for love, balancing her hard-edged persona with vulnerability. It's doing it voluntarily. Well, we tried that before, but if you want to try it again, it's fine with me. Lorenzo Lamas, in real life, was both the son-in-law and son of Abby Dalton on Falcon Crest, thanks to his marriage to Dalton's daughter and his on-screen role as her character's son. However, off-screen, their relationship was less harmonious, with Dalton reportedly expressing disgust over Lamas' tattoos. In the show season finale, Peter Stavros received a mysterious phone call, hinting at a storyline for the following season. The storyline would have involved Stavro's brother arriving in the valley to challenge the Channings. Notable actor Anthony Quinn was considered for the role, but negotiations fell through, rendering the phone call meaningless. In summary, the cast of Falcon Crest had their fair share of real-life drama with complex relationships and behind-the-scenes negotiations. Despite these challenges, the show continued to captivate audiences with its engaging storylines and memorable characters. Two of those tablets every hour. Keep a close watch on her eyes now. I hope you know how much you're pulling. In Falcon Crest, Jane Wyman's portrayal of Angela Channing differed from the J.R. Ewing-like characters of the time, as she aimed to depict a strong, successful woman capable of showing compassion and love. When Wyman was unable to appear in two episodes during the fifth season due to surgery, the character of Angela was written to disappear after being arrested for interfering with her nephew's wine shipment. Prior to the show's start, David Selby and Susan Sullivan were already acquainted, having met in 1973. Sullivan was cast first, while Selby joined the series in its second season, following the cancellation of Flamingo Road. Jane Wyman, the lead actress in Falcon Crest, had a long-standing relationship with Lorenzo Lamas, who joined the show in 1981. Wyman was friends with Lamas' family, having worked with his father, Fernando Lamas, in the past. Originally, Falcon Crest was set to premiere in September 1981, but a writer's strike delayed its release until the end of the year. In 1988, after the character Melissa Agrity was written off the show, actress Anna Alicia returned to Falcon Crest a few months later, playing Melissa's look-alike, Samantha Ross. Despite Melissa's death, Alicia's contract had not expired, allowing for her return in a new role. Ever meet a man like that? Probably through Henry Dunant. They took a great many precautions to keep their relationship. Jane Wyman, the lead actress of Falcon Crest, received support from her co-star Susan Sullivan and Lorenzo Lamas during her hospital stay while the ninth season was in progress. Obtaining the role of Lance Cumson was no easy feat for Lamas, as he had to audition twice and compete against five other contenders. Interestingly, Wyman played the role of Lamas' grandmother on the show, even though he was just 41 years her junior. These facts highlight the dedication and camaraderie of the cast members during the filming of Falcon Crest. Terry! What? I want to talk to you! He gave her the 25,000. Jane Wyman, best known for her role as Angela Channing in Falcon Crest, took a brief hiatus during the ninth and final season due to health issues. However, she returned for the last three episodes. Interestingly, Wyman was initially set to reprise her role as Aunt Polly in The Adventures of Pollyanna, but had to decline due to her Falcon Crest contract, leading to Shirley Jones taking on the part. Despite her health challenges, Wyman's performance as Angela Channing remains a beloved and memorable part of television history. I never thought I'd see you so tied down. Huh. 
Robert Foxworth gained public recognition for his portrayal of Chase Geoberty in the television series Falcon Crest. Lorenzo Lamas, who played Lance Compson, had a close relationship with Jane Wyman, who played his grandmother Angela Channing on the show. He often mentioned in interviews that Wyman was like the grandmother he never had. Wyman, who was a main cast member and appeared in almost every episode from 1981 to 1989, missed 16 episodes in the final season due to health issues. However, she returned for the series' final three shows, having appeared in a total of 208 out of 227 episodes. Her dedication to the show was unwavering, despite the challenges she faced. After our final report is issued, no, 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 you're not understanding me. This so-called preliminary report. Lorenzo Lamas, one of the stars of Falcon Crest, had an interesting relationship with co-star Jane Wyman. Despite growing up around her, he was not a fan as a child. After the show's cancellation, Lamas and actress Anna Alicia remained close friends, with Alicia even appearing on Lamas subsequent shows. In a notable instance, Wyman was scheduled to exit a limousine in a scene, but refused to do so leaving the producers in a difficult position. These behind-the-scenes details add an intriguing layer to the popular 80s series. Thank you, Father. Jane Wyman, known for her role on Falcon Crest, was friends with John Forsyth. Interestingly, Wyman joined Falcon Crest in the same year that Forsyth began starring in Dynasty. Lorenzo Lama's character on Falcon Crest was falsely accused of murder multiple times, which is reminiscent of the premise of his future show, Renegade. Angela Channing, a key character, was often referred to as the Old Dragon Lady. These intriguing connections add depth to the series and its cast members' careers. Where we've got to get her picture splashed across the front page of every paper in this country, otherwise she might. Susan Sullivan was let go from Falcon Crest due to monetary disputes with the new production team and creative disagreements after the show's direction changed in season eight. Jane Wyman, who played a major role in the series, demanded her character to be written off because of her public feud with Lana Turner, who had previously left the show. Over the course of the series, the character Angela, played by Wyman, had been married four times, but none of her marriages lasted. This reflects the complex and ever-changing relationships that were a central theme in Falcon Crest. Sherry. The television series Falcon Crest, which first aired in 1981, was actually a spin-off of the movie The Vintage Years. When the show Flamingo Road was canceled, David Selby joined the cast of Falcon Crest as Richard Channing, thanks to his friendship with Earl Hamner Jr. and his existing contract with Lorimer. As for Jane Wyman, who played the lead role in Falcon Crest, she was initially hesitant to take on the part due to the stark contrast between her character and the self-sacrificing roles she had played in movies before. Despite her reservations, Wyman ultimately decided to take on the challenge. Jane Wyman's close friend, Esther Williams, was stepmother to Wyman's co-star, Lorenzo Lamas. Williams was married to Lamas's father, Fernando, from 1969 until his death in 1982. The original choice for the role of Francesca Gioberti was Sophia Loren, but she was replaced by Gina Lollobrigida when contract negotiations fell through. Lauren was actually Aaron Spelling's first choice for the role of Alexis in Dynasty, but she had demanded too much money. When Gregory Harrison joined Falcon Crest in its final season, the show began to focus more on him and less on the Falcon Crest series that had been established for the previous eight years. This shift in focus ultimately led to the show's cancellation. What happened to your grandson? Why should you be sorry? You were the one that was hit. That's true, but uh, Lance has his. During the late 1980s, the majorest primetime soap operas, including Falcon Crest, Faced budget cuts as ratings started to decline. Lorimer Telepictures Productions had to reduce the budgets of shows like Dallas, Knott's Landing, and Falcon Crest. This led to five of the ten main cast members not appearing in several episodes of the seventh season due to budget constraints and a high number of guest stars. Despite the production challenges, the cast maintained friendly relationships off-screen. Jane Wyman, who played the lead role of Angela Channing, 
remained close friends with Susan Sullivan and Lorenzo Lamas during and after the show. An interesting behind-the-scenes detail involves the character of Angela's new personal assistant, Mistress Whitaker. Her last name was borrowed from Claire Whitaker, the mother of supervising producer Ernie Wallingren. This was an inside joke, as Claire Whitaker stopped working for the show around that time. Maybe he's planning on defecting from Angela's camp. I'll keep... In the 1981 TV series Falcon Crest, Kate Vernon and Christian Alfonso both had roles as Lorenzo Lama's girlfriends, making for an interesting coincidence as they had also played love interests of Tony Danza on Who's the Boss. Richard's consistent milk drinking habit on the show was actually a creative idea by David Selby, who aimed to add depth to his character's initially dark and unsympathetic persona. Moving on to events after Falcon Crest, Susan Sullivan, who also starred in the series, performed alongside her former castmate Robert Foxworth in the play Honor at the Matrix Theater in West Hollywood, California, in August 2005. These fascinating connections and trivia offer a glimpse into the world of television and the enduring bonds formed among cast members. In the past few years, I'm trying to find out why. Where are you going? In the making of the television series Falcon Crest, several noteworthy events took place. For instance, during a surprise filming session for David Selby, Susan Sullivan genuinely slapped him in the face, marking the third time such an event had occurred. Later, due to financial reasons and creative differences, Susan Sullivan was let go by the new regime after the eighth season, although she did make guest appearances in the ninth and final season. Regarding the show's name, producer Michael Feilerman proposed Vulture's Nest, which was later dropped due to its aggressive tone. Earl Hammer Jr. then suggested Falcon's Lair, inspired by Rudolph Valentino's Beverly Hills Mansion. Eventually, the name was changed to Falcon Ridge, and then Falcon Valley before settling on Falcon Crest. Goodbye, Mr. Mayfield. Did you apologize to Chase and Maggie? Yeah. In the casting of Falcon Crest, Ginger Rogers, a seasoned actress, was considered for the role of Charlotte Pershing, Maggie's mother. However, her age proved to be a barrier as producers believed she was too old for the part. The show's production company, Lorimer Productions, took over Warner Brothers Television, acquiring their props, including Angela Channing's original desk and one of the guest chairs, which are still owned by the company today. Jane Wyman, who played the lead role of Angela Channing, was 41 years older than Lorenzo Lamas, who played her grandson, Lance. Despite the age gap, Lamas was determined to land the role and beat out six other actors during auditions. His perseverance paid off, and he had the opportunity to work closely with Wyman, which proved to be a significant experience for him. In December 1981, CBS premiered Falcon Crest, a primetime soap opera that aired on Friday nights following the success of Dallas. The show's original lead actress, Susan Sullivan, met her future successor, Wendy Phillips, on the set of Having Babies before Sullivan left the series in the final year. Interestingly, a last-minute script change occurred when Jane Wyman fainted on set, causing her to miss only one episode of the eighth season. Falcon Crest remained in its original time slot for most of its run, except for a brief shift to Thursday nights during its final season, just before Knott's Landing. Night. I'll tell you all about it. Oh, well, I'd love to, but Arthur and I have reservations at the club. Hope you don't mind, Douglas. In the fifth season of Falcon Crest, Jane Wyman's absence due to health issues posed a challenge. The writers had to incorporate her character's disappearance into the plot, and even had to reshoot parts of episodes that had already been filmed. In the fourth season, Paul Freeman's character, Gustav Riedman, was written off due to public outcry over his character leading a Nazi-linked cartel. In casting, William R. Moses was initially considered for the role of Lance Cumpson, but ultimately lost the part to Lorenzo Lamas. Moses was then given the role of Cole Giobrini instead. These instances demonstrate how the show had to adapt to various circumstances during its production. I'll try to get out there later this afternoon. Well. In October 2003, Susan Sullivan, known for her role in Falcon Crest, shared the stage with her former castmate and friend, David Selby, in a production of Anne, 
Gurney's Love Letters at the Apollo Theater in Martinsburg, West Virginia. The original role of Lorraine Prescott was intended for Ally Sheedy, but the part eventually went to Sullivan. During the filming of an earthquake scene, most of the main actors were replaced by stunt doubles for safety reasons. These behind-the-scenes details offer a glimpse into the making of the popular 1981 TV series, Falcon Crest. Well, I have a surprise for you. I thought I'd give you a lift back to the valley. Oh, thank you. Mother, do you mind if I... Lorenzo Lamas gained public recognition for his role as Lance Cumson in Falcon Crest, and later as Det, Reno Reigns in Renegade. Meanwhile, Jane Wyman, a key cast member of Falcon Crest, was hospitalized during the show's ninth season due to a liver ailment and diabetes following a collapse on set. Before the ninth season, Susan Sullivan, also a part of the Falcon Crest cast, had cut off her hair during the summer hiatus. Her decision to do so led to her being let go from the show. These events marked a significant turning point for the series with major cast changes and health challenges for its actors. Lose my appetite. It's true. When was the last time you heard of a daughter kidnapped? Robert Foxworth, known for his role in Falcon Crest, has acted alongside Joanna Cassidy in three different series Falcon Crest, Six Feet Under, and Star Trek Enterprise. Jane Wyman, a devout Catholic, scrapped a proposed lesbian storyline involving Jane Badler's character and Aaron Jones' character, changing their relationship to that of sisters. Margaret Ladd, pregnant during the second season of Falcon Crest, was hidden behind various objects and was absent in some episodes due to her pregnancy. Oh, I read your novel. Mm. <laughs> Very uh, compelling. Mm. Very. I, I did find some of the images. William R. Moses, dissatisfied with the storyline, left Falcon Crest midway through season six. However, he and the producers reached a compromise and he returned for two more episodes in the following season. Initially, when Robert Foxworth had to exit the show, the producers planned to have his character, Chase Gioberti, fail anger management classes and become the series' villain. This never came to pass, and Foxworth even directed some episodes. Lorenzo Lamas holds the record for appearing in all 227 episodes of Falcon Crest, making him the only actor to do so. Mm. Mm, okay. In the dramatic series Falcon Crest, several significant events took place. For instance, during the episode Flesh and Blood, Lance Cumson received a distressing phone call about his grandmother Angela Channing's health while at work. The nurse informed him that they had to wait with Angela's family while she was in the emergency room, slipping into a coma. In reality, Lorenzo Lamas visited Jane Wyman in the hospital during this time. Regarding the character Jason Gioberti's death, the producers and writers considered various possibilities before deciding on the final version. Initially, they thought of having Jason's dead body found in a huge vat in the winery or at the bottom of a ravine. However, they ultimately chose to have him fall off the catwalk in the winery during the first episode in his father's house. Interestingly, when Lorenzo Lamas joined Falcon Crest, Jane Wyman cautioned him not to do drugs after observing his struggles with lions. Wyman's warning had a significant impact on Lamas, who has since maintained a drug-free lifestyle. If Falcon Crest, the 1981 television series, left an impression on you, we'd love to hear your stories. Share your memories and experiences related to this classic show. How did it affect you personally? In what ways did it influence your view of cinema? By engaging with likes, shares, and subscriptions, you'll help us explore more of these cinematic treasures together. Let's reminisce and celebrate the impact Falcon Crest had on us.